Hey guys, there we go for our buying a house in Japan playlist. A couple of our patrons have asked what's going on next door. This was actually a few months ago. This is the first time they surveyed the place next door. And every time they've done it since, which is about four or five times they've surveyed the place and marked it out, they always look totally baffled, like they've never actually done it before. <laughs> they always walk around with these maps looking totally confused, calling people on the phone, totally confused. Occasionally they come and knock on our door and ask us where something is. Where's this and where's that? And we just say, have you got a map? <laughs> so that was a few months ago before they ripped out the trees. But since then, four or five times we've had guys come. This was another set of guys. And these are the only ones we've seen, but there might have been more for all we know. This is another group of guys came to survey the place and put in their red pegs. But they all are the same. They all look baffled. Most of them come over and call out to us, Suma San, and bang on our door and... You know, do you know where the boundary is or do you know where the corner is? No, look at your map. Look at this guy, totally baffled. <laughs> Can't work it out. No, That's, this is another guy, right? This is another guy. He brought his guard demand with him so he could put up his gear on the street and he gets his phone out and he calls up someone. They all seem totally baffled, totally confused. Don't know what's going on. Can't work out the map. <laughs> all of them look like they've never done it before. It's funny, it's entertainment, it really is. As tragic as, as this has been an experience, it's been equally entertaining. So look, look at this, two of them have marked different spots, 10 centimetres from each other. They've disagreed on where the corner is. <laughs> You'd think it's like an exact science, wouldn't you? What, where's the confusion? So, And then inevitably... We get these dudes turn up. So here's this guy turned up in the suit. Now, this guy works for the building company that's building the new houses. So he's gone across the street and he's talked to them and he's come over here. And this is the other thing that happens is they come over and they're looking at their map. And there's an easement at the side. So they sort of wandered down here past our rubbish room over there and they were all confused and you know they're coming back that's why i got the camera out i knew he'd come back he's gone around the corner oh geez that doesn't go anywhere uh uh and he's come uh, back again and oh, where's it go where's it go oh here it is and because you know why he's come don't you he's come to give us the present of doom Yep, we've been getting lots of presents of doom. Oh, look, sorry, we're going to be inconveniencing you for the next few months with our trucks and our banging on the door and calling out Sumimasen, so here's a present to compensate. <laughs> oh, funny ones. So this is, they decided they needed to move a lot of the dirt. There was too much dirt there, they needed to remove a whole heap of it. And so this was, this was classic. They had the three trucks and one backhoe, and the backhoe would would fill up a truck at a time and the other guys would wait so the three trucks were waiting and then they'd fill up one truck and then that truck would wait and they'd fill up the other truck and that truck would wait and so they'd all wait until the three trucks were full and then they'd drive away and go and dump the dirt and then come back again and then all wait again instead of just filling up one truck that drives away comes back and that, that way the backhoe would be working constantly the three truck drivers would be waiting until all three trucks were full and then they'd all drive away. Then there'd be no truck left, which means the backhoe operator would sit there and wait until the three trucks came back. And then he'd fill them up again, and they'd all sit and wait. And then they'd drive away again. <laughs> just, just constantly from our window, because from our window we can watch all this stuff. And it's just constantly, you know, look at these guys faffing around, smoking cigarettes, having a chat, killing time, waiting till the three trucks are full so they can go off again. You know, and it, everything seems to be like this, confusion and, and faffing and and <laughs> it's mildly entertaining. It really is. It's mildly entertaining. They're funny ones. And every five minutes, someone seems to be coming, Suma San, and they're either telling us what they're about to do or asking us questions. So quite often they'll come and tell us what they're about to do. Oh, we're about to remove some soil. Here comes another guy with a bit more of an explanation. We're about to, we're about to do this. And, and quite often I'll say, okay, <laughs> waiting for a question. There's no question. Oh, we've just come to tell you we're going to dig a hole. Okay. And because it's got nothing to do with us. We don't own that place, you know. Now, this is another day. 
This is different backhoe and different trucks. This is a different group of people, okay? Those first guys were just there to remove dirt. These guys have come to put down the the concrete the concrete foundations for the fences. Some of you will remember we predicted months ago that what we'd end up with here is a concrete block fence about two rows high probably with a wire fence on top. That's what we predicted months ago, right? So these guys are here to put them in, put those fences in. And so it's a different group of guys, different backhoe, different trucks, but similar sort of style with filling up both trucks before they drive away. <laughs> So, yeah, it's just, it's a classic study of Japanese thinking and hive mentality. You know, they're coming and telling us what's going on all the time. It's got nothing to do with us. You know, those of you who've been following this know that there's an easement between us and them anyway. We don't even share a boundary with this place. It's got nothing to do with us at all. But they sort of think that they've got to keep us informed. You know, now we're going to do this, now we're going to do that. And we don't want to know. It's really annoying. It's like, go away. And, and the question thing's really annoying too. They come over with their with their map looking really confused. You know, where's this and where's that? I don't know. You go work it out. <laughs> That's not our problem. We don't own that place. I actually said to one guy, we're not an information centre, okay? You guys keep coming and asking us everything. We're not an information centre. We don't want to know, you know? We're trying to be nice to, to these guys when they turn up because we know they're just trying to do their jobs. But it, it it's just... It wears patience a bit thin because we're not enjoying any of this experience at all. So in trying to involve us in it is not what we want to do. We just want to let them get on with it and be left alone, basically. So anyway, they did that. So just have a look at this. This is amazing. So they've worked out their boundaries now for their for their four houses, right? Look how wide. That's a house block. See, there's a fence on the left that they're building and a fence on the right. That's a house block. They're going to put a house at the back of that block, as we predicted, which will be about a metre from our boundary, as we predicted. And it'll be about two cars wide, so they'll have a two-car car park at the front here. Now, that power pole's in the way, so the power guys came and said, oh, just letting you know, we're going to move that power pole, which means we have to rerun the power to your house um, at their expense, and you're not going to have power for a day. Oh, thanks, that's great. <laughs> That's really good, thank you. So that's one block there. There's the second block there. So they're about probably 10 metres wide. It'd be about 10 metres probably, wouldn't it? There's the comp concrete blocks for the concrete block walls that we predicted. About two rows high, we predict. <laughs> and that's the third block. And then down in the corner is the fourth block. So each of those is going to be about probably 150 square metres, something like that, 10 metres by about 15 metres that they're going to build their tiny little houses on and sell for probably $200,000 or more. And people will buy them, young families will buy them, probably, young families with screaming kids and barky dogs, <laughs> probably. So, yeah, pretty much exactly how we predicted, isn't it? Those of you who've been following the story six months ago, pretty much predicted exactly this. Look how narrow that is, that 10 metres wide. It's about as wide as our driveway, isn't it? So they're going to be about a metre. By the time they build that house, it'll be about a metre between the fence and the house. So something to look forward to. Anyway, that was the update. More videos coming soon.